relevance. STV News. As the nation celebrates its 55th year independence anniversary, our correspondent Amadin Uyi looks into the country's security situation from May 29 till date. His report. May 29, 2015. Nigeria's new president, Muhammad Ubuari, is sworn in after three attempts at the presidency. I will preserve, protect, and defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. For four years, Boko Haram had terrorized Nigeria's Northeast, looting, killing, maiming, and even taking over territories. The new government indeed had a lot on its plate. President Mohamed Bari announced to Nigerians he will be relocating a military command center to Meduguri, the heart of the ongoing campaign against Boko Haram. He also immediately set out to rally neighboring countries of Cameroon, Chad, Niger, and the Republic of Benin, all members of the Lake Chad Basin Commission. Experts admit this was a strategic move considering the losses the Nigerian forces had suffered in the last few months. June the 8th, President Buhari attended the summits of heads of developing countries to seek for international support to end the insurgency. The next day, the Chiefs of Defense Staff of the Lake Chad Basin Commission met in Abuja to strategize on the final documents for the takeoff of a reinvigorated multinational joint tax force. We shall continue to condemn the reprehensive and atrocious activities of Boko Haram in our countries. This, therefore, brings to the fore the urgent need for closer collaboration between us to curb this menace through operationalization of the multinational joint task force. Another meeting by the presidents of the Lake Chad Basin Commission countries in Abuja, hosted by President Mohamed Buhari, followed. Nigeria promised a takeoff grant of $100 million, about 4 billion naira, for the multinational joint task force with other presidents, accepting that a Nigerian will head the regional force till the last remnants of the insurgents are crushed. This is what I call assertive leadership. What transpired it goes to show that he can st stand his feet on ground and say, look, this is what I want. We expect to see even more, you know, push, bigger push against these terrorists. Because by the time we have these nations, these countries, militaries from, you know, from the Lake Child Basin Development Commission, pull, pull, pull resources together and deploy together, I'm sure the, the terrorists will be, I'm sure they will have something to, to chew. While Nigeria's new president was making frantic efforts at curbing the activities of the sect, the sect itself was poised for war and tried to send a strong message to Nigerians. June the 12th, Boko Haram insurgents attacked about six villages within the northeast. Escaped residents claimed that about 37 people were killed in their raids. Five days later, on June the 17th, an attack at Mungunu in Boronu State killed about 63 people. Also on the 27th of the same month, two female suicide bombers attacked a crowded mosque in Meduguri. Eyewitnesses claimed that about 30 lost their lives in that attack. The next day, an attack on Gubja by a 12-year-old female suicide bomber killed about 10 people. Five days after the Gubja attack, on June the 28th, two female suicide bombers blew themselves up near a hospital in Meduguri, killing five and injuring 15. In the month of June alone, almost 150 Nigerians lay dead from Boko Haram attacks. Between July the 1st and 26th, 15 separate attacks were recorded in the Northeast, with over 420 Nigerians reportedly killed. The increasing attacks called for desperate measures by the new administration. In a quick move on July the 13th, President Muhammad Buhari made changes to the heads of Nigeria's military for a new approach to the ongoing campaign. On July the 24th, the military informed Nigerians that the command center relocated to Meduguri had become operational. The center of gravity of this um, fight has now shifted to its proper place and we will begin to 
at least the insurgents would begin to feel the weight of um, the new administration in terms of its seriousness in fighting the insurgency. Five days later, the military announced once again to Nigerians it had rescued over 30 women and children from its mop-up operations going on around the Dikwa area of Borono State. With the military now on the offensive against the insurgents, the sect was gradually resorting to guerrilla warfare. On July the 31st, a failed suicide attempt at the popular Gamboru market in Meduguri using a tricycle left all the attackers dead. It was early in the morning, some suicide bombers in Kechena said the bomb exploded with them just by the custom bridge. Yeah. And it affected only the five of them in that taken attack. On August the 3rd, a delegation from the United States Parliament met with federal representatives over human rights records, giving assurances international embargo on armed purchase is being lifted. The fact is that this new regime with the new general staff uh, has begun the process of ensuring that the military's professionalism against all uh, both civilians uh, and combatants, uh, has been uh, made in a way that we can both be confident that the rules of, of law are being obeyed. So the process has begun to, uh, to lift restrictions under Leahy. On August the 7th, internal reorganization within the Nigerian military continued. The chief of army staff made it clear he will not tolerate unfit army personnel. We are reinvigorating uh, our, our training, you know, to be more professional. And it is in line with my vision, all right, uh, to have a professionally responsive uh, Nigerian army. On September the 1st, Nigeria announced the recapture of Gamburu Ngala. Many insurgents were killed in the operation. The victory brought about widespread jubilation among Nigerians. September the 3rd, in an effort to consolidate on its gains and increasing acceptance among Nigerians, the army reinstated about 3,032 dismissed soldiers, initially convicted and dismissed over disciplinary charges, including failure to confront Boko Haram insurgents for lack of weapons. The Nigerian army some time ago instituted a committee to review the recent disciplinary cases in the service especially of those soldiers in the defunct operation Zamalafia, the aim of which was to ensure discipline, regimentation, and justice in the system. The committee has concluded its sitting last week and has made certain recommendations that led to the reinstatement of 3,032 soldiers into the Nigerian army out of 5,000 cases that were reviewed. The next day, September the 4th, Nigeria's army chief announced to Nigerians it is wrapping up its campaign against Boko Haram. He stated in clear terms, the war will soon be over. They have been substantially degraded. We are approaching the last phase of uh, the fight of the, uh, uh, against the terrorists. The month of September showed a reduction in attacks. Between June and September, available records show that the attacks had fallen by 81%. Shortly after, the military once again informed Nigerians that it is closing up on the location of the over 200 girls kidnapped from Chibok over a year ago. We know that the Chibok girls are somewhere we are suspecting that they are somewhere. Um, we are not sure where they are, but we are suspecting they are somewhere. As soon as this is confirmed, we will attempt to see what we can do uh, to bring them back in peace. Three days after the announcement, Nigerian troops once again rescued 60 women and children and dismantled located terrorist fuel depot at Guzamala local government area of Borono State. The army stated in quotes, 
The troops have further blocked the terrorist supply routes that led to Babangida and Tarumuwa local government area of Yobe State, where they mostly get their supplies. Troops are intensifying efforts to identify and neutralize all Boko Haram logistic bases to further constrict the terrorists and hasten their total defeat. End of quote. As Nigerians mark another independence, it is hoped that the three months deadline given to the military is a success and the pains and losses suffered from the insurgency becomes a thing of the past. We believe in this nation. The last few years 